When nobody has been chasing you down, Jesus himself still is chasing you down. Amen. When you feel like the whole world has given up on you, when you feel like your family has given up on you, Jesus is still chasing you down. Amen. Because the Bible says he leaves the 99. All right. And he chases after that one because you are a precious lamb before God. Amen. You are a sheep. Amen. And he loves you so much that he will leave the 99 that are good just to come chase you down. That's how much he loves you. Amen. And do you believe that? Do you believe that God loves you so much that he can chase you down? Amen. Psalm 23 says that thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. And, and one thing about the staff is that Jesus is the staff of life. He's the bread of life. Right. And with the bread of life, he nourishes you with his word. And that's why you can take comfort because him being the staff of life, he can encourage you. He can nourish you. He can heal you with his word. But also the Bible says that thy rod shall comfort me. All right. And that rod is a source of correction. And I asked the Lord one day, I said, God, why does it say thy rod shall comfort me? And the Lord spoke back and he said, because my children have not gone so far away that I can't correct them. Amen. Because the Bible says, too, that as you shun the Holy Spirit, God will give you over to a reprobate mind. Right. And that reprobate mind, that word reprobate can mean a castaway. And it's not that God chooses to cast you away, but it's because you position in your heart that I don't want to submit to the Holy Spirit. And then it, it, the world turns around and they point their bony finger in God's face saying it's your fault. But God gave you chance after chance. Amen. And he chases you down. Amen. And I really believe that God is chasing you down to build you up to be the Joshua generation. When I was here at the altar today, the Lord spoke to me and he said that he is raising up a Joshua generation in this church. And he said, the Joshua generation, what did they do? When they entered the promised land, they drove the inhabitants out of the land. They took back what was rightfully theirs. Amen. And my Bible says that the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And what does the violent do? They take it back by force. Amen. And I was meditating today and I asked the Lord, I said, why can we not speak the word and creative miracles take place? I said, God, I want to do that in my life. I want to speak a word and somebody be healed from cancer. I want to speak a word and someone's ear can, can, come, can come alive. And God spoke to me and he said that I have not renounced the negative words that I have spoken out of my mouth. Because James chapter 3 talks about the tongue being the smallest member and the most unruly. And it sets a blaze of fire. And just like... You put a, a, a thing in a horse's mouth and you can control them with that little thing, right? And even the, the sail, they have a little rudder that, that, that stirs and stirs, that steers the boat. And God talked about how and made an analogy that even the tongue is something that can send forth a destiny for you. And we have to learn how to guard our tongue. You know, because we sometimes speak out of emotion and we don't realize that some of us are suffering still today because of words that we have spoken years ago. Because of curses that we have spoken out of our mouth. And God also says in James chapter 3 that bitter and sweet water cannot come out of the same well. Amen. And I told the Lord and I, and I fasted and I prayed and I asked the Lord to forgive me of any negative word. That has come out of my mouth that can block my destiny from speaking a word and he have his glory through my life. Because I, I feel like like David, the Isaiah, I feel like Isaiah, the more that I grow up, then woe is me for I am a man of unclean lips. And not only that, but I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Right. And what did God do? He sent an angel to get a call from the altar to come and cleanse him. Amen. And what did Joshua do when they saw the promised land? He didn't speak as the other spies spoke. The other spies chose to submit their words to doubt and unbelief, saying, but we are just grasshoppers compared to them. 
We can't overtake them. Surely we cannot conquer this land. And Joshua and Caleb took their stand in faith and chose to use their words to make a destiny for them for God. That's in alignment to his word. Amen. And we don't know sometimes that our words pave the way for the destiny that God has for us. When you learn how to, and listen, I'm not saying that you can create your own destiny with your words. Don't get me wrong here. God is the author and the finisher of your faith. So he is the one that makes the way for you. But your words can hinder your destiny from coming to pass. And it can steer you in a way where you don't live up to the will of God for your life. And for us to be the Joshua generation, we have to learn to ask the Holy Spirit to guard our tongues. A lot of words have come out of correction. You know that we need to stop the murmuring, the complaining, the backbiting, all those things. You know, I taught with the young adults last night that I believe that we are going to have an upper room experience when we come on one mind and one accord. There was no doubt in that place. There was no murmuring in that place. There was no backbiting in that place. But the Bible says they were on one mind and one accord. And for the Holy Spirit to usher in his presence here after this fast. We have to be in one mind and one accord, church. Put aside your pride. You know, one thing God has taught me is sometimes you're going to have to apologize for something that you did not do. To keep peace with all men. Right? And, and this is where we have to learn how to take the high road and be mature in God. To know that we see the bigger picture and we don't operate out of the emotion of the right now situation. Amen. So church, arise. For God is calling you to be a Joshua generation. Amen. You will take back your peace in the name of Jesus. You will take back your finances in Jesus' name. You will take back the salvation of your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Because guess what? The inhabitants and the place where Joshua went in, the promised land, guess where the kingdom of God is? Is in your heart. Amen. And God is going to have you claim back the territory that was rightfully his. And you will gain that healing and that deliverance that he designs for you. Amen. Amen. I believe fasting does also have physical benefits. You know. Um, that's not the reason why we fast. But there is... A plus to fasting is their physical benefits. Because we don't realize what we feed ourselves with food is toxins. And we don't realize that those toxins in our body can, can, you know, block us from being healthy. And by fasting, you're starving yourself of that toxin where God can detox you. All right? And again, that is not the reason why we fast. But there are benefits to fasting, you know? And... I truly believe that God wants to make us whole, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Amen? And God doesn't want you to be so spiritually on a mountain that your body is still suffering. You know? Because one thing God has told me, because I was an overweight person for most of my life. And thank God he's given me the ability to start being healthy. And he said, I need you to get healthy because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you have to be ready for what I'm getting ready to do through you. You know, and our bodies have to be healthy so that we can reach the capacity that God wants, where God wants to take us, you know. And so your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we fast, we are literally feeding ourselves with the true nourishment, which is the word. Because if we're the temple, that means Jesus resides in us. And when we read the word instead, and feed ourselves with the word instead of with real food, we are nourishing the Jesus in us. And we're literally allowing our spirit man to increase while our flesh man is decreasing. And trust me, fasting is not always easy because Satan tries to bring hell around you and try to, try to make everything go wrong, right? How many people have fasted and the enemy just tries to destroy everything around you? But be of good cheer because that means you're doing something right. Amen. And God is working all things together for the good. Listen, I'm going through something in my body right now, you know, and, and it's something through fasting as well that I believe. And I asked the Lord here, even I said, God, why is this happening? Like, cause I'm like, God, whatever it is, I repent in the name of Jesus. Like, uh, you know, perfect repentance leads to perfect deliverance. And God said it was like a Job experience that, you know, to anybody that knows, I have like a cyst on my back right now and it's very on my tailbone and it's very hard to sit down. But the Lord told me that he allows that, 
You know, he allowed it for me to keep me closer to him during this fast. Because when I fast, I get distracted. <laughs> you know, and this is, is, is pushing me to fully rely on him. You know, and I take joy in it. Knowing that I'm going to be set free physically, emotionally, and mentally. And we can take joy in everything that the enemy brings up against us. And you know, the Bible says, even Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that he gloried in his infirmity. And why? So that the power of God could come upon him. So when you shift your perspective and you glory even in your trials, you're ushering in the power of God to come and, and come to your rescue. Has anybody had an experience when they feel like they, they were left behind with the rapture? I, there was an earthquake that was here in Maryland. Maybe, does anybody remember that earthquake? It was probably back in like 2011. When I tell you I was on my bed and I literally felt like somebody was shaking my bed. And I hopped up so quick and I'm like, and I, I thought it was my brother. And I'm like, get away from, from here, you know? And I looked and I did not see anybody. And when I tell you this fear came over me, I said, oh my gosh, I've missed the rapture. You know, you on your knees praying and asking God to forgive you. And then my, like, like whoever, like you said, like uh, Jerry's mom came in the room. My mom was like, is everybody okay? And I was like, okay, we ain't missing. I'm still here. You know? So it's like, we've got to, and see the Bible says to be instant in season and out of season. You know, I always say you have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right. You always want to be ready for whatever God wants to do because the Bible says that this life is as a vapor. You know, we're here one minute and it's gone and he comes what? As a thief in the night. You know, those foolish virgins regretted, you know, not having the oil in their lamp and their vessel. And they thought they had time. And a lot of times where we make a mistake is we think we have time. And we see people dying over and over again. And I don't know about you, but every waking moment I have of my life, I want to give God praise. You know, every making, every waking moment of my life, I want to be an example of who God is. And, and God wants us to live that life for him so that he can bring those people in. Amen. A lot of times we feel like because we have an anointing or a calling on our lives that that's why God blesses us. You know, I even had to learn this in ministry that God wants to heal and deliver you, not because you have an anointing, but because you're a son. And he wants you to have that intimacy with him as a father. You know, the Bible says that even the wicked give good gifts to their kids. How much more will the father that loves you give you what you need and even what you want sometimes, you know? He supplies for all of your needs according to his riches and glory. But the Bible says when you delight in him, he will give you the desires of your heart. And the great thing about delighting in him is now your desires start to be pushed away and your desires become his desires. So you end up desiring what he desires and he gives you what he already had desired for you from the beginning. And God wants to have an intimacy and a personal relationship with you. You know, you can't ride on the coattails of your parents. You can't ride on the coattails of Pastor Blaine. God, every man has to give an account for every idle word that comes out of their mouth, but also every action that they do here on the earth. And you're not going to be able to stand before the Father and say, well, I went to New Life Sanctuary. We cast it out doubt. We prophesied. You know, we ran around the church, did cartwheels in the church, right, Joy? And, and, and we're going to have to give an account for our own self. And God wants to have that personal relationship with you. Amen. Sister Marlisha, come on up here. She had a hand up. Amen. Give God praise. Amen.